What's going on, you Direct Major General Frank Muth, live from Fort Knox, Kentucky. Uh, we are so happy uh, to be up on the net once again to uh, provide you an hour worth of uh, shout outs, information, and take your questions. Because in this flat organization, we know it's essential that we communicate, communicate, communicate. There's 14,000 of you, over 1,400 locations across this entire world. And not just those folks that are in uniform, but also our great civilians. So anyway, I'm looking forward to this next hour. Sergeant Major, what do you got? Colonel Rockstars, what an absolute fantabulous way to start the weekend. Can't wait to hear your questions. Over to you, DCG. Hey, you may not be able to hear me, but I am here. It is great to be part of this incredible, or can't see me, but you can hear me. It's great to be part of this incredible team. Over to the Sea Rock. Sea Good Rock. Afternoon, team. Hey, just uh, can't have the DCG uh, doing one up on me on the hat. So representing the Warrant Officer Cohort this afternoon, looking ready for your, your questions. And CG, you've got the control, sir. Hey, thank you, C-Rock. Okay, guys, we're going to get right to it. A uh, few opening comments like we already had. And then, um, so uh, what do we got? I'm going to give you a bit of an update. And sorry about the glasses, and hopefully they're not reflecting too much. All right. First things first, uh, we increased station utilization across USAREC starting on Monday. Every one of your battalion commanders briefed me personally going down a go, no go checklist to ensure that we've reduced the risk as much as possible. And we have. And we have put a lot of protocols in place to ensure that we've reduced that risk. But at the end of the day, it's been nine weeks and we've got to start increasing utilization. We have stopped using the term. The term is obsolete, open or closed. Because now that we can go virtual, you're never closed. Um, and we are now increasing utilization of stations and we are increasing our work. Why? Because our mission has not gone away. We're going to talk more about it later. But everything that we missed in March, April and part of May is being rolled up in fourth quarter. It's a fact. The Army needs us and the Army needs us to make mission. Now, part of making that mission, as you started, as every one of you recruiters, rock stars, uh, you know, kind of got briefed on Monday and Tuesday. Your station commander sat down with you and they did a 4856 with hybrid C. And they talked about your conversion data and what is required of you for USAREC this month. All right, and we just kicked it off. So that is your contract. That is your pact with our leadership, with the leadership of USAREC to get after the mission for this month. Um, now, uh, part of that, uh, um, part of that also is the incentive program. We got a lot of incentives coming out for both you and we're working on bonuses for soldiers across the board. Now, thinking, uh, uh, talking about another aspect of virtual recruiting that we've learned, the VRSs have killed it. And guess what, VRSs? We promised this to you a couple weeks ago and we have come through. We have the gold badge points ready to go for the VRSs. I got briefed on several courses of action yesterday. I gave some guidance. I should be approving that on Monday or I'm sorry, on Tuesday. All your points from this previous year will be retroactive. And our intent is before I change command, which is 23 of July, we're going to award a gold badge to a VRS member out there somewhere. Because I'll tell you, several have already earned it from what they did last year. Uh, talk about probably Kansas City, Houston, um, and uh, also uh, New England. And maybe an up and comer that I'm gonna do a shout out here for in a minute. Um, and by the way, uh, part of how uh, we figured out to get the gold badge uh, uh, points done is that we are now have a poll sent out. Uh, and it's, uh, so what's gonna happen today is we're gonna do a survey about how to do the point split. And Dave Grimm, a great member of our civilian team up in the G3, is going to send that survey out. We want to figure out, you know, what's your input from the field. So when you get that survey, fill it out and how we're going to do this point split overall. And then once that poll is completed, uh, then we're going to go to the uh, Pentagon and get it fully approved. So please, we're going to open this uh, survey and give it about a week and then close it out. All right. And again, all those points are retroactive. Um, next point. I only got a few, by the way. Part of our effort to get this machine moving again is a uh, what we're going to call an Army National Hiring Days. Days. McDonald's did this a couple years ago, and in one day, they hired 50,000 people, increased their employment by 7% in one day. And I've briefed this to the secretary and the chief, and uh, we have the entire backing 
of all the senior leadership of the Army. And although it's going to be the 30th through the 2nd of July, with a number of days where the entire Army is out pitching our message. By the way, the message is join us. And getting that word out to drive them to GoArmy.com and into our stations. Uh, we are actually going to do a dress rehearsal, full up rock drill dress rehearsal live on Operation 245. Uh, which I think it's going to end up being Friday, June the 12th, because the birthday's uh, the 14th is on a, on a Sunday. Right, DCG? I'm pretty sure it is. All right, yep, I'm getting a thumbs up. So bottom line is we are going to all efforts, every aspect of the digital medium, every senior leader, every every aspect, and it's using events, it's using people where we can, it's going virtual where we can, everything is going to gear towards driving, and we're going to do a full dress rehearsal. This is like force comms involved. This is like AMCs involved. Every ACOM across the Army is going to be involved, and they have a singular message uh, that is going to be put out to help drive people into the Army or drive them to us so we can have a dialogue about joining the Army. Okay. Um, and all that messaging and all that information will get out to you soon. All right, let me finish up here. I got some shout outs. A Sergeant First Class Garcia from the Monroe Recruiting Station, Louisiana. After the tornadoes hit in Northeast uh, Louisiana, Sergeant First Class Garcia rushed to ensure his neighbors were safe after a tree fell through the roof. Uh, once the weather cleared, he and his family helped a few other households with clearing their roofs and, and taking care of the neighborhood. Great job. That's awesome. That's giving back to your local community. Staff Sergeant Austin West, Syracuse Battalion, uh, featured, and I read this article. It was a great article. Staff Sergeant West, it seems like also uh, you play the guitar. You know, you may you put some videos up of you, um, you know, uh, doing some riffs on that guitar. But anyway, it was great to see you out there. You cracked the code. You cracked the code. He said in the article he didn't know anything about using that virtual side because he was really good face to face, but he figured it out. And he's already put several people in the Army. And I, you know, I called a staff sergeant, I won't say where from, and we talked for 30 minutes this week. And I said, hey, how's it going virtually? Oh, sorry, I, I, you know, I can't do it. Or I, said, I don't know how to do it. And I'm like, man, it's been nine weeks. You know, did you know that VRS is like New England, put on classes online of how to do this? You can do it, but you've got to take your time and your effort to learn. We've got best practices up on the mill suite. We've got all these different things to help you virtually recruit. recruit. And Staff Sergeant West, you are the one that also took it upon yourself and had that intestinal fortitude and that professional drive and work ethic to go out and learn how to do it. Now you've got another tool for your, your tool bag for recruiting. And then uh, also uh, Tampa Bay, the VRS, a Staff Sergeant uh, Vocal. Uh, Staff Sergeant Maston and Staff Sergeant Lopez. You heard me earlier talk about Houston, New England, and Kansas City as the leader VRSs. This VRS at Tampa Bay are killing it. So guess what there, Kansas City, Houston, and New England? You got people that are nipping at your heels. So if you still want to be number one, you all better get after it because the VRS at Tampa Bay is crushing it. And then lastly, before I hand it off to the CSM, I just want to do a complete shout out to the Baton Rouge Battalion as a whole. I talked to your battalion commander earlier this week, and you got to understand, I understand everyone's trying to pick up their pace now, but I talked to him one-on-one -on -one in February of 2019, and you guys were not in a good position at all, at all. And he looked me in the eye and said, sir, we're going to get this battalion back on track. And by the fall, you were killing it. And he took, a, and I called him one that month that you guys made 100%, which hadn't happened in years. I gave him a call and I said, that is awesome. It was through great leadership. He and uh, uh, the command sergeant major, and she just, she got in there a couple months ago, or I think maybe last summer, I can't remember. But anyway, they have been killing it. And I just want to say to the whole battalion, great job. Keep it up. Now get back to work and start putting them in boots. Sergeant major. Thank you, sir. So um, I just wanted to say just a little bit more about uh, Command Sergeant Major Stokes. So she's amazing. And she did get there last summer, and she's been crushing it ever since. So Recruiter Rock Stars, yes, we're utilizing recruiting stations. That's We're on it. But remain vigilant. We have to still do with PPE and social distancing to protect yourself, future soldiers, you know, and anyone that we come in contact with. So that that's still vital. So let's talk about PCSs. Okay, so the stop move has affected everyone across the Army without a doubt. So the ETP process begins with obtaining a concurrence between the gaining unit and the losing unit. 
So we may want you to leave, but your gaining unit may not can't take you right now and vice versa. So that's pretty important. So we get that and then it goes to the vice chief of staff of the army for a decision. And so that's why it takes a little bit of time. And if we don't get concurrence from the gaining unit, you're not going anywhere during this time, during the stop move. And there's, I wanna emphasize, there is no standard timeline. I can't tell you that it's gonna take three weeks or six weeks, it's just gonna take the time it needs to take for the vice chief of staff to get to the vice chief of staff and for him to make the decision. Now that our G1 is being phenomenal along with your brigade um, S1s to get this process going fairly quickly. And as soon as we get them, we're doing everything we can to get them processed and back. So let's, let's talk a little bit more about um, Sergeant West. So Sergeant West is like many of you. He, he wasn't doing social media and then he took it on. We need you to take it on because we know, we can see your numbers, we can see what you've been up to, that many of you have not, have not embraced social media. And we have so much out there to help you. So on the mill suite, on our professional mill suite, you can go on and see what, what are the best practices are. And, and we have our VRSs are everywhere giving classes. We need you on board with that. So with that, let's talk about the 10 best practice pointers. Um, and every week there's this, this occurs, and we've got some phenomenal rock stars out there. So Sergeant First Class Frederick Briley um, is four day fast for social media boosting guide. Um, the Dallas Battalion entire VRS um, with their key links to the best practices. Three day pass to Sergeant First Class Adam Parsons for content multiplier. And for Sergeant First Class Kevin Bumgarner, I hope I said that right. Um, maximizing social media presence without funding. So posting a group pages. So voting is still open until 2000 tonight for the next round. And let's talk a little bit more about the virtual space. So a few weeks ago under Task Force Radical Learning, we embedded virtual, virtual liaisons at the brigade level. This is very important. The, the data, the feedback that they provide to the headquarters and to you is going to move us to the next step with autonomous recruiting. We have to recruit on a digital plane. It's crucial that we do this. And when you think about this, when you think about the non-commissioned officers out there that have said that I just can't do this, I want you to remember this. Compassion, passion, standards, and discipline. That is our philosophy. We have compassion, we have. When COVID hit, we pulled everyone out of the recruiting stations to work teleworking, but we weren't closed. Now that we're gaining our pace back and utilizing stations, we need you to get with the program. We need you to have the passion for recruiting. The passion to learn social media and how to recruit social media is part of our standards and discipline. The standard is recruiting with every tool that you have. The discipline is having the discipline to learn how to recruit with social media. So that's my challenge to every single recruiter out there that has not done this yet. You have got to embrace this because this is part of autonomous recruiting and we've got to get after it. So, I have a few shout outs, you know I always do. So let's rock first with 1st Brigade, Storm First Class Delgado. Um, he's a PT stud and he's also a recruiting rock star because he's, he's, doing, he's led his entire station with generating the most appointments, which will lead to the most contracts, I bet. Staff Sergeant Palomino out of Albany Battalion. He was recently promoted to the rank of Staff Sergeant. He is a brand new recruiter. And he, right out of the gate, he's put three people in the army. And that's amazing. And Staff Sergeant P, we need you to infuse your peers with us. Out of 2nd Brigade, and I already told him, if I mess his name up, he can, he can throw darts at me. But Staff Sergeant Lichtenthal, that's German, uh, he is a goal bad recruiter. He's, he's just stuck on getting his ring and he will get it but he enlisted six future soldiers in phase line May. He enlisted six people in three weeks. Phenomenal. Staff Sergeant Mims out of Atlanta Battalion. So this young man was at a gas station in Dublin, Georgia, and a woman collapsed. He gave her and everyone was standing around and watching and no one wanted to help because of COVID. He gave CPR and revived her did it until the, the paramedics came and she made it. And that that's just phenomenal. 
So that's all the shout outs I have right now, but you know I'll have some later. Over to you, DCD. Hey, sorry, Major, thank you. Good morning and good afternoon to everybody in USREC. A couple things that uh, I wanna talk through today, uh, some policy updates and guidance. Um, how we're shaping the future of recruiting and a lot of what the SAR Major talked about and some amplifying comments uh, based on the Ar Army National Hiring Days uh, and al also Operation 245. So a couple things here on policy, number one. So recruiter expense reimbursement or REA or RER as we all know it as. Hey, look, if you're not out there using it to boost your message, I'd, I'd highly encourage you to do it. It generates momentum. It's a lethal weapon system that you can use at your level in the social media space in your professional uh, social media personas. It is using market analytics, uh, the algorithms and machine learning from all these different uh, uh, social media sites to boost your message and expand your social media presence based on the youth market, based on locations, based off of demographics. We know it's working. I've spent a little time with our G4 and G8, and I know that you are submitting, that you were, those who are submitting for the reimbursements, it is coming back to you. So what we really want to see is 10,000 recruiters out there using 75 bucks a month in your RER, three quarters of a million dollars, we'll figure out where to find the money to, and have to go back to the Army to find that money as, we, as to test fire the system. Think about using this for the rest of this month. Think about when we start uh, working Operation 245 here, where I'll talk about in a minute, in support of that, and in a big way as we move to the Army National Hiring Days. Um, station commanders, I know you're all old and crotchety, but I need you to lead by example here. You need to lead by example and, and understand how to boost using your RER, and if you don't have content, your VRSs do. Trust me, reach out to those VRSs, They'll hand you something tomorrow, and you can use it to expand in your space. Second policy, uh, domicile to duty. So the CG tasks the staff to figure this out, and uh, there is a change to the USREC reg. It's actually UR 700-5 regarding domicile to duty. Effective 22 May, this modification delegates authority to company commanders to endorse domicile to duty for up to seven consecutive days in conduct of field work. It's what it is not is a blanket authority for every recruiter to get a gov 24-7, 365. Domicile to duty usage is based on recruiters needing to conduct field work. That is a commander's call and it needs to be evaluated. Domicile to duty requires good leaders who are aware and involved because we are accountable to ourselves. It also informs where we want to go next with USAREC. And we are putting the pilot out for about 60 days of this to examine usage and to learn lessons and incorporate it into what we see USREC doing next in, ter in terms of autonomous recruiting operations. Point two, the future of learning. Learning, adopting, adapting. We've got a task force out there focused on kind of the autonomous recruiting operations in the future. The SAR major hit on it pretty hard about your virtual embeds that are in your brigades by name, Sergeant Davis for 6th Brigade, Sergeant First Class Hagen for 5th Brigade, Sergeant First Class Subtle for 3rd Brigade, Sergeant First Class Wallace for 2nd Brigade, and Sergeant First Class French for 1st Brigade. They're coming out of the RRC in the headquarters here to harness lessons learned that quite frankly may be the norm in your formations now, but, be, but could be critical to someone else some, uh, in USREC and oh, by the way, we see what we need to do in USREC in the future itself. But also just a quick mention of two non-commissioned officers out there that have been killing it in being able to post on behalf of, the, of USREC uh, on, the, on the, uh, the, the Mill Suite and ProNet, Sergeant First Class Shiflet and Sergeant First Class Jason, Jacobs, posting monsters, digital business cards, best ways to do it, creating ads in Boost, pulling ADHQ leads, Instagram photo and video formatting, and on and on. What these embeds are learning from you is contributing to the future of this formation. We're looking at adaptation and, and, and evolution of everything we do. I also want you to be aware that there is a survey coming out, now the second one we've talked about, but this is about the future of technology in USREC. Your opinion and your comments matter here. Okay, third point, Army National Hiring Days. The CG uh, opened up the, the aperture on this. It is an umbrella op called Operation Call for Service 
two parts to it. Prospecting Blitz, focused on Operation 245, 12 June, right around the Army birthday. The second part, Army National Hiring Days, as he said, 30 June to 2 July, a full marketing blitz. Here's some things to think about. Depending on who you ask, we've got a lot of ground to make up based on what COVID has done to us. We've had to plan against the hardest conditions uh, in order to how we get through this FY and set conditions to the next um, FY. A threat-based environment where we mitigate risk every single day. The mission, the way we normally have it, is in a non-low threat environment. We now have a threat environment. We know that we're going to have to surge in fourth quarter. As an aside, let's all remember that what you do in June affects what you do in fourth quarter. We know it takes about 45 days to program mission loads and contact a contract. A surge, which is phase four of what the CG has, has talked to all of us about, of getting back to where we need to be, is an organization's proactive investment in a change in the environment, unforecasted, unplanned, but needed and heavily resourced. And I'll tell you, the entire Army is behind Army National Hiring Days, which is a shaping operation. Army National Hiring Days is a culminating three-day concentrated effort, an all-Army approach. If we look at this as an information operation, or rather an influence operation, key leaders allow Key messages allow us to execute at echelon and amplify in your space uh, the theme and message of join us. It drives activity in the virtual space to GoArmy.com, a landing page to direct candidates to fill out the Army Career Explorer and link with a recruiter down to a station. We want 10,000 of these, 10,000 of these. We're breaking the bank out here. Break that down. Use your recruiter reimbursement the RER, expense reimbursement, in your virtual prospecting. Your fires are coming from your brigade VRSs, your battalion VRSs, your brigade field marketing teams, the USREC DEF, the VRD, Army Enterprise Marketing, leaders at Echelon. Expand, expand influence in your space and make us go find more money for you. Messages can be tailored to your demographic. If you don't have any, get with your VRS. That's your air weapons team. They can get it for you give you fires that you can use in your space. As the CG said, we'll do a rehearsal of concept through Operation 245, and we need everybody on the bus here. Thank you very much. Over to the CROC. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, team. CROC here. A couple of things for you. First, I want to talk about the quality of life survey. So we talked, there's, it's like the third or fourth survey we've got out there, but they're very important. We need your, your feedback. So we need your input by, by 26 June. It's a 30 minute survey designed to help understand your difficulties that you're having and of course uh, improve all your well being. Um, you should have already received an email in it. I think there's going to be a reminder that's going to come out in about a week, but please get after that survey. It'll only help us uh, get after what's important to you. Civilian recognition. We've got a great team of civilians out there. It's time to recognize them. So we have a, a great opportunity. Civilian Employees of the Year, it's open for nomination and has five categories. Uh, the task has been published, timelines have been, been provided, uh, along with the instructions. So it's a great opportunity, once again, to uh, identify those uh, high-speed civilians in, in your workforce and ask you to complete that by the suspense of 24th July. A couple of shout-outs. Okay, Sergeant First Class Becker, Shreveport South Station, he and his girlfriend, Jennifer, have made 175 masks to donate to home health facilities for children and veterans. That's awesome that, that they take that upon themselves. Great effort. Thank you. And then Staff Sergeant Webb, Gulfport Station, Mississippi. Throughout the pandemic, Staff Sergeant Webb has completed every fitness challenge from station to the battalion level uh, and regularly volunteers share news, the impacts of operation to help our personnel and our families. So great effort by Sar uh, Staff Sergeant Webb and continue to, to drive on. And then with that, CG, you have the control, sir. Hey, thank you, C-Rock. Hey, did you guys hear the DCG? He was speaking my speak, air weapons team. I used to fly in one of them things back in the day. All right, hey guys, uh, <laughs> Roger that. 
All right, Kelly, let's get to those questions. And by the way, guys, before we go to the questions, right now you're posting questions online. If you see it, every one of our staff members is on there. They're answering them while you're posting them. So we're going to go to some questions that people sent in, but if, you know, we'll also pick some up if we have some time. And I know it took 30 minutes to do that, but we thought it was important to put a lot of this information out because there's a lot going on. And uh, we're all in this together. So, all right, Kelly, what you got? All right, sir. We're ready to dive in. First question, in New Jersey, we are just now beginning to process applicants at MEPS again. However, some applicants' PICATs have gone past 45 days now. Is there anything that can be done so we can honor the commitment of those applicants? G3. Sir uh, and team, it is uh, the G3 here. Just uh, really want to touch on this because you know, we've got areas like uh, New Jersey, you know, Mid-Atlantic Battalion, uh, New England Battalion, New York City Recruiting Battalion. They're in COVID effective areas. And, and, um, and as we develop the soft contract process, we completely understand that uh, the, we, we administered PICATs to some of these applicants. So we brought this issue up to Army G1 and OSD. Um, and we need you to work through your battalion and brigade ops uh, because we need to understand the scope of the problem. This way I can take those numbers back up to Army G1 and they can work this issue for us. Um, you know, so applicants uh, who have expired or, or right now are under a blanket policy. So we would have to ask for that exception, just so you understand that. Um, and then MEPCOM's aware of the issue as well, and, and I'm working to provide them the scope. Um, one, one tangent to this, though, is, you know, as, you're, as we were developing the, 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 you know, the soft contract process, is the use of the ASVAB predictor test. Um, you know, it's a way to um, basically prevent a complex applicant from running out of time because because we're not held procedurally or or by policy to an expiration date on those ASVAD predictor tests. So so just a a, a TTP out there for the team as we uh, as we we potentially could be dealing with this again in the future. So that's all I have. Back to you, Kelly. You got it, Kelly. Okay, sir. Next question: With the 2018 79 Romeo E7 promotion list being extinguished. Where does that leave the 79 Romeo career field as far as being over strength or balanced in regards to E7s? And what does that mean for the 2019 list in terms of promotion timelines? All right, that's, uh, I think we're gonna maybe double tap that one between uh, G1 and CSM. G1, you up on the net? Okay, I'll go out. Wasn't sure if Sergeant Major was ready. Good afternoon, you Sarek. So the good news is that we have exhausted the 2018. The bad news is we still have 217 on the 2019 list. So what does that mean? That means we're over strength 79 Romeos. Unfortunately, the, we're at 117% strength for Sergeant First Classes. We are under strength for staff sergeants. So until we exhaust this list, until we have the, the room to promote more, um, we're not able to give a timeline of, of what the E7 is going to look like, unfortunately. So, Major, do you want to add anything? So, I just wanted to um, to remind folks that, uh, and that this is this is more this is for recruiters and also for the leadership. So, we are significantly understrength staff sergeants. So, we need staff sergeants to convert. And so, we're on a good glide path. That uh, so, we need you come on over to the 79 Romeo world. That's all I have, sir. Well, I'm going to throw in there. We need you, but you you got to be able to put them in boots because you may want to convert. We're going to go right to your data, and, and that's going to be one of the a major consideration, right? You would yeah, think. So, Roger that, sir. So speaking of which, I have two shout-outs just about that out of 3rd Brigade, and they're from the same battalion. Starting first class, Christina Feller, she's Wonder Woman. She's put in uh, 22 enlistments this year so far. And then her battle buddy in another another part of the battalion is um, Staff Sergeant Mills. She's put in 21, and she just recently converted. Staff Sergeant Mills just recently converted. So hats off to you, and that's exactly what we need. We need fired up Staff Sergeants that know how to put people in the Army. 22 and 21? Yes, and those are, those are Those are some big numbers. Good numbers. <laughs> they need to be like uh, Sergeant First Class Smith. Remember him out of Fayetteville? 65. 69. 69, that's right. Okay, <laughs> Kelly, back to you. Okay, sir, next question. 
Call forwarding has just finally been working at some stations. Is USREC planning on continuing this service indefinitely or ceasing when operations return to normal? Given the uncertainty of COVID-19, we were originally briefed that this is a short-term addition to the stations with no idea of long-term continuity for operations. All right, hey, uh, before I hand that to the G6, I personally just want to, in front of this entire group, give a shout out to the entire G6 team uh, to include their leader, Ronnie. Uh, I will just tell you that we could not have made this transition if we didn't have a team that was forward thinking, forward looking, setting the conditions. And they, they redid our pipes since last year in terms of the bandwidth, but it's not just that. All this new capability that just since March 18th that they have introduced and they're taking and listening to you and changing how we operate in the technical uh, side of the house could not have got where we are today had it not been for them. So, Ronnie, thank you so much. Please relate to your entire team. They are friggin' rock stars and they're incredible. And thank you. Ronnie, over to you. Yes, sir, and thank you, uh, thank you, sir. It's an honor to serve the the command and the recruiters on the ground, uh, sir. The the answer to this question is absolutely unequivocally yes. We will continue call forwarding, uh, and we're going to attempt to raise the bar and move our our station. Uh, phone communications infrastructure into a cloud environment um, so that going forward, no, you will no longer miss a call to your recruiting station. We know phone prospecting, depending on your market, may not be um, as good as other methods, uh, but we definitely don't want you to miss calls from your COIs, your educators, parents, uh, folks that do communicate on phone lines. So uh, we, we hope to deliver uh, very soon, some cloud-based communication services so that you can set your greetings, your messages, check voicemails, do all that digitally, remotely. Um, you have a, a number for your station with a queue service that you can manage calls as they move from recruiter to recruiter, and you can tr can control at the station level. Um, so, sir, that's all I have on that subject, and thanks again. And again, it is an honor to serve the command. Okay. Thank, so, thank. Go ahead. So, first, boom to the G6. All right. Second is that, hey, look, team, this is pretty important that uh, that we're re we're activating this across USEREC. Um, and if if you don't know it, one of the things that we've we've we have adapted in this environment is that calls that go in or or contact a recruiter that goes in through GoArmy.com go someplace else right now. But once we're 100 percent and we've done the technical rehearsal on that, that pointing of calls coming out of, of contact a recruiter will go back down to your stations and wherever it gets forwarded at. But we, we need some help here. Over. All right. Thanks, Pat. All right, uh, Kelly, back to you. Okay, sir. Going through this time has shown us that conducting appointments virtually allows us to actually conduct nearly 90% of the appointments made at our company level. This, in the long term, would be able to reduce no-shows, reschedules, windshield time, etc. Now that we're more comfortable and realize we can do more than just face-to-face -face meetings, can we look into getting phone stands with lights similar to what you see YouTubers use? The thought, the thought being, maybe we could dedicate an office space toward virtual conducts. All right, I, I, there's a couple people that want to do some uh, discussions, but let me. I'm going to take this one first, Ronnie, just to say, this is the kind of thing that we keep that we have to continue to hear. Which it's a great idea. Okay, we we are adapting to the new norm, and why wouldn't we want to grab a space in a in a station uh, and potentially make it your kind of virtual meeting space? Okay, that's one, two. None of the policies and regulations that we've adjusted uh, to allow for you to do this virtually, whether it's signatures, uh, moving of documents, um, uh, you know, uh, all those different things that we authorize you to do from home or, or separated, none of that's going away. We got it. We're keeping it. And it's the right thing to do. So I'll just tell you, keep these ideas coming because yes, yes, oh, and yes. Ronnie, what you got? Yes, sir. Absolutely. It's it's absolutely. Sir, this is a great question, and I'm super excited about the entire autonomous recruiting um, effort um, and the way forward for the command. This is absolutely the kind of thing that we need to be considering. Uh, we got to look at at I call it three battle domains for the recruiter. It's the physical space, whether it's your home office or or utilization of the station. It's the virtual environment, and it's the mobile recruiting environment as you're moving from point A to point B across your battlefield. And we have to look at the right weapon systems, IT kit, uh, to enable the recruiter across all those domains. Um, and so we're doing a bottom-up review. I'm working uh, directly with the DCG on this, the G5, the G3, the G48, and we're taking a comprehensive review from the bottom up 
and, and I'm confident we're going to get the IT kit right for the future. Um, and we got to do it faster uh, than later. And um, in many cases, I love the opportunity to run and catch up with the recruiters on the ground. That's where the best ideas come from. Uh, and we're all in, sir. Man, that's why those guys are awesome. Uh, Sergeant Major, did you want to jump on that? Too? No, I just want I just wanted to say, um, and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the station commander's name. I don't remember where we were. Um, we were doing the, the Northeast Coast Swing, and we went into a recruiting station where the station commander did not have an office. His area was out in with, with his recruiters, and they were using the office the way that he, he and his recruiters thought they should use it for a variety of reasons. And so there are things that you can do now that um, to – to to get into this space you can set up you can set something up in your office now to look like you know professionally like your um for your virtual appointments so literally the sky your imagination is your limit that's your limit and that, that's all i have sir awesome thanks did anybody else want to jump on that one i think we're good okay kelly back to you Roger, sir. Okay, so I have a, a question about training, and then I have a follow-on right after that, um, so we can have all the questions about training all in one, sir, Major, just so you're aware. Um, first, are there any anticipated delays to the June 1st recruiter class? Absolute great question, but recruiter officer, as you know me, before I answer that question, I have to give a shout-out. So I'm going to give a shout out to RRC, Miss York, and Sergeant Force Class Owen, who have absolutely crushed the functional courses in the distri distributed learning redesign migration. So hats off to you and great job. Okay, back to the question. So, you know, we're preparing to begin their resident courses for the ARC at the beginning of June. But that still depends on the decision from the Secretary of the Army and Secretary of Defense. If the class is canceled, the students receive um, information from HRC and ATARs um, at least seven days before the class starts or was supposed to start. And they'll be reprogrammed for a future class. Um, so we're planning on we're planning on stacking it so that we can can get everyone trained in the FY or at least get started in, in this FY. Back to you, Kelly. Thanks, our major. And a, a follow-up to that while we're talking about training. Uh, with stop movement and social distancing, BLC has moved to virtual classes. Is there any chance that ALC and SLC could also be moved to virtual classes? What a great question, and no. So um, the Army TRADOC has decided, um, and of course with um, you know directive from the Army, that um, ALC and SLC is not going to be virtual. What is going to happen what is happening now is that uh it's essentially you could say it's deferred so you can get you'll get you can get promoted but you will have to go to alc and slc and that message came out from the army um seven weeks ago so almost at, right at the very beginning so um so no it's not going alc and slc is not going to uh, distribute learning anytime in the future back to you kelly Thanks, our major. Okay, next question. Almost two years ago, I heard there would be a new software to replace Recruiter Zone, Leader Zone, GCRC, and combine them all into one seamless interface called the Accessions Information Environment. I think I remember some battalion was chosen to use it first and compile a survey on how that works. When is this the expected re release date of AIE? So I want to hand that over to who I call affectionately Bravo Bravo Golf. Big brain guy. Pat, what you got? Oh. He, he, he is the smartest one on the team. I'm just saying. Hey, t sir, I, I, I live in your shadow every single day. So I, so look, to, for, for the team here, the AIE contract, quite frankly, was awarded in May of last year. Um, a ARIS is over 30 years old. Some of the software code we've found o over the years, we can't even manipulate because the software programmers that went in and changed the code are no longer around. And, and you you see it every single day and what, what's happening with ARIS. And, 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 and I'm just going to provide reinforcing fires to the G6's ability to manipulate around that. AIE is our ARIS for the future. Its base source code is industry standard, commercial off-the-shelf off capability used by some of Fortune 500 companies today. 
Many of the workaround activities of the past 75 days will be embedded capabilities to the future recruiting operating environment for autonomous recruiting, paperless processing, digital signatures, dynamic mapping, real-time dash dashboards, mobile lead cards. The first step in AIE is the pilot test starting in Harrisburg Battalion. Right now it's scheduled for uh, the late fall, the November timeframe. And then iterative upgrades and expansions over the course of a couple years. Like anything, there's challenges here. So fielding a capability, fielding and, and bringing this capability to field to, are, are being worked through, but let there be no doubt. We want to collectively ensure we have a system we need for the next couple decades. And I, I appreciate the question, sir. Thanks, Pat. Kelly. Roger, sir. Okay. With the new stand to counselings, it says all station commanders are considered on production. For large station commanders, this seems unreasonable. Large station commanders are expected to manage a lot of recruiters. When do we have time to prospect ourselves to ensure we meet our individual mission? Station commanders already signed for their station's mission, so why are we being held to an individual mission as well? Sergeant Major, go ahead up with that one. I know that that's a that you want to jump all over that. Let's see. I uh, G three. If you could give your piece, and then I'm going to jump all over it. Thanks, Sergeant Major. Hey, hey. I'll just tell you, as a leader with six years in the trenches with our recruiting force, when you're thinking about the best station commanders that are out there, they've always got that lead from the front mentality. Every single one that I've seen that's gone after it in in made mission consistently leads from the front. I'll turn it over to you, Sergeant Major. Okay, station commanders, ask yourself this. Do you want to be the leader that's out front that your soldiers look up to you? Or do you want to be that leader that's in your cubicle that never leaves? Are you the station commander that when you get the new recruiter, you toss him the gut keys? Are you that person? You can't be that person because you are a professional Sammy 9 Romeo. You're the best the Army has to offer, and you can do that. And so if you're in a large station, that means you have a deputy station commander. Between the two of you, you can manage your recruiters, lead your recruiters, and put a ton of people in the Army. Just think about Staff Sergeant Lickendahl, six people, 79 Romeo. And think about Staff Sergeant Natalie Mills, 79 Romeo, who are going to be future station commanders. Now, what, are you telling them that once they become a station commander, they no longer recruit? No, you lead by example. You're going to show our young Dassers, what it is to put people in the army. So I tell you what, I got a challenge for you. Station commanders and large stations, hit me up when you put people in the army. When you get, when you under on a hybrid C, when you your station is makes its mission and you are part of that, you need to hit me up. DM me on Instagram, call me, send me an email. That's a challenge. A challenge to all of you. And there's 1,400 of you, 1,400 contracts next month. <laughs> That's hey, all I have. Hey, Sergeant Major, let me throw something in there, two things. Um, so they got, don't we have a position out there on all the stations called Deputy Station Commander? Sorry, Major. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. If, so you, a, if, you, yeah, if you have at least six folks in your station, Deputy Station Commander. Yep. They okay. Can do it. I, I want to put something else out. Um, so think about it in this terms. When I was a squadron commander um, of Cairo Warriors in the 82nd downrange in Iraq, uh, I flew missions just like everybody else. I was on the schedule on rotation just like everybody else. And I flew about five times a week. Uh, and I'll tell you what, the reason I did that wasn't just because we, we were short pilots. Yeah. But at the same time, I could not ask my guys to go out in teams of two all across Iraq without myself doing it too, because you can't do that as a leader. I did the same thing as a troop commander in Desert Storm and the same thing as a brigade commander in back in Iraq again in 2010 and 11. Uh, I was flying three times a week, a little bit less, because I had a huge brigade uh, all across Iraq, but I still flew missions every week. Station commanders, you need to put people in boots every month. That is your job and that sets the example for everybody else. All right. Kelly. Thank you, sir. Okay. USRAC message 2044 allowed us to initiate conduct and admin waivers as well as tattoo and age exceptions before an applicant takes the physical. 
I found this method saves recruiters a lot of time gathering medical documents, arranging traveling, waiting for medical waivers or consults just to learn that the applicant may be disqualified for other reasons. Can this policy continue even after the pandemic is over? Yeah, I'll jump on that one, Kelly. And I think CSM bottom line is I've already said it. Every policy, every adjustment to the regulation that we oversee and every policy that we've changed and some of the stuff that we've been going to the Pentagon, we want, um, we, we're going to keep. That's one. Two, one of the last things, I mean, I, I'm, I've got a lot to do in the next, I don't know, 60 odd days. Well, I don't, I'm not counting. I'm just, you know, we're head down working. But um, I think it's in, I've been trying to get several of the waivers back. One of my goals, guys, is to get the tattoo waiver back in this building again. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I've been, I've been nipping at it and I'm going to go after it again next week. And I think I can get it back. Um, and so we are going to continually try to get those uh, waivers back down to this level. And um, I know somebody's going to put it on this. Uh, they're going to, they're going to put the question up right now, Sergeant Major. I know it, it's probably there. No, we are not going to allow any DAT waivers. Just not going to happen. Sorry. Sergeant Major. So, so keep your good ideas coming and keep 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 asking us these questions and we will do everything that we can. And sort of that that's what I was gonna say. No, we're not doing that one. <laughs> All right, Kelly, back to you. Thanks, sir. Okay. UM2033 said the minimum number of prospects is twenty-five to reward a register to win item under two hundred and fifty dollars. Who decides what item to give? For example, the recruiter wants to give an Apple Watch, the station commander wants to give an iPad mini, and the others up the chain want an Xbox, Nintendo Switch, or PlayStation. They're all below $250. Who wins? All right. So I'm just going to tell you Frank Muth's philosophy on something like that. The recruiter at the station knows his or her population better than anyone. They know their market. They know the high school they're going after. They have the pulse of the community. And they know, I suspect they know, exactly what to put on the register to win to get the most leads. I don't know if the company commander first sergeant would have the same level of, of fidelity for that. Um, so, or even higher at battalion. That's my opinion. Because again, Sergeant Major and I have moved the ball as far as we have over this last now 22 months because we... The second we got on board, we listened to the recruiter in the trenches, and they gave us the ideas. You're still doing it, and we're still implementing them. I just don't know, again, if that battalion, whatever, maybe it could be the, you know, the marketing rep guys or somebody, uh, maybe even the VRS. I don't know if they would have the same level of understanding. That's just Frank Moose's opinion. Sorry, Major, you got, you got an idea on that? It's, it's Tab the Gavi's opinion, too. So it just reminds me of the very first high school I went into, when I came on board in Nashville and the recruiters I was knew exactly what the, the kids in the high school wanted. So again, I'm not sure that um, anyone above that level has that level of fidelity. All right, Kelly, I think we got one more and then we're gonna take a couple from the field before we run out of time. Yes, sir. In the midst of the teleworking, we were authorized to utilize FSR2 outside the seven day window. Next thing you know, we had reservations pulled away from applicants. Why did that happen? Jay, what do you got, bud? Hey, sir. So we're a learning organization. So there's good and bad to this. Um, you know, so temporary reservations lock training seats and reduce the jobs available to all applicants. So as we were coming back from, you know, telework to station utilization, we had to look at kind of ramping up our ability to, uh, to produce contracts, and that's you know getting back into the maps, right? So we opened up processing around 27 April, and we took a phased approach to going back to standard business rules, back to that seven-day window. What we didn't know, and here's the learning point, is that when we when we did that, we assumed that there would be weekly increments downward towards seven days, but HRC in the system, the way HRC built the tempres in FSR 2S was that it automatically snapped back to seven days. So we immediately went into a battle drill, working with Brigade Ops over the last couple of weeks to extend those temp reservations and get those applicants the training they're signed up for. So we'll continue to assist the field uh, with those temp reservation applicants um, as they have projections to the floor. However, you know, and this is what Todd asked me to tell the force this, you know, please remember that the applicant must be qualified to enlist. 
Okay, we can't we can't temper someone and then find out they're ten percent overweight. Okay, um, so so we're not taking some a good reservation from someone else that is fully qualified. Okay, we can't. Jay, just, Jay, sorry. Tell, of course that didn't happen. Nobody did that on our system, <laughs> did they? Where they temporized somebody that was clearly never going to get through the door. Yes, uh, literally. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. All right. Kelly, let's go live. Okay, sir. While we have um, Colonel Rosa Mina engaged, I'll, I've got another question that is, uh, I believe, in his lane. Um, high school future soldiers who just turned 18 are having issues getting their ID due to DMV shutdowns. Have we implemented any course of action for this? So, I mean, I, I can't address that issue directly because that's a that's a governmental decision in terms of their offices for DMVs. What I could do is look if we look and see what we can do with exceptions in those regions that have this type of problem. So I'll take the issue on. I'll bring it up to MEPCOM. I'll say, hey, we're gonna we, we need to know the scope of it. Obviously, if we're seeing this uh, on a on a um, on a regular basis with um, with with our seniors. Or with our our young or youth that are trying to get these IDs so that they can process at the MEPS. We understand the policy changes to going moving towards real ID out are, are, are out there. And those are OSD driven. So um, let us dig into this and see if we can help um, relax some of those standards so we can get these folks across the line. Okay, sir. I think um, Ms. Sharon has not had her chance in the sun yet, so we're going to add in a G48 question about uniforms. Yeah. We've got a lot of folks who um, who have received the new uniforms, but the question is when will other recruiters in the formation yeah. receive the new uniforms? Hey, hey, Kelly, let's take this on as the last one because we got about four minutes left, and we want to. I, I don't want to, uh, you know, go over three o'clock. Although we started a little late, but still, go ahead. Register. All right. Did you hear the uniforms question, sir? Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, okay, Sharon. Uh, Sharon, are you up on the net? Can you can you uh, uh, give some uh, clarification on some of that? When will the rest of the recruiters start uh, getting them? I suspect, though, it may have slowed down because of COVID, especially if they were uh, uh, slowing down production. Uh, Sharon. Yes, sir. So COVID nineteen did impact the production of the AGSUs um, as they start to ramp up. Uh, we'll start to get the new dates for them. Okay, thank you. All right, Kelly. Uh, all right, so what we're going to do, guys, uh, Kelly, is there any burning questions you see there that definitely, you know, besides our folks answering them on the spot, something that really needs to be uh, talked about? If it if it doesn't pop out. Um, okay. I, I think one that would be good to address or that you've um, addressed a little bit in some of your media engagements, but maybe good to address uh, within the force. Um, just regarding the mission, any specific reason, reason why the mission wasn't reduced to adjust for the massive deficit across USEREC? Yeah, so um, so here's what we did is uh, the mission is reduced a bit, meaning uh, we just got our mission letter and uh, it, for the accessions, uh, it's going to be um, a reduced. Uh, I'll just put it that way. And your, your chain of command because uh, this is open form. So uh, your chain of command can tell you what it's been reduced for in sessions. But our contract didn't because the Army needs all of this. And so, I, I, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's remember, you know, it's end strength and retention and accessions. So what we drive towards end strength for the Army um, is a retention, which is doing quite well, and then also recruiting. But we have to have both those legs to be able to support it. And uh, what we did to remission the brigades, uh, we did take into account, um, we looked at several models. Uh, the one I ended up choosing, uh, which by the way, all that is getting loaded today, so you can do your maps, is a combination of about 80% of where we would typically distribute amongst the brigades based on uh, previous performance or, or, or what's, in, you know, go, but based on, you know, their region and those different aspects to that. But we baked in about 20% of COVID impact. Uh, and to ensure that some of those areas, first brigade, look at Philadelphia, look at Boston, look at New York, some of those, you know, look at Chicago. So we wanted to make sure that that, that was taken into account um, and, and each brigade basically it, we took into account their COVID impacts, but it is what it is. It's not going away. All right. And um, 
we now have uh, essentially, you know, we're hitting, we're, we're approaching fourth quarter uh, and we have got to start really ramping up, guys. It's not going away. And so everybody, everybody uh, is going to be pushing hard. Why do you think MEPS is going to be open and processing for two Saturdays a month through the rest of the summer? That's a fact. Uh, and they're not going to be, we're going to try to get them not to close too much on the Fridays either. Um, and if we've got to push later into the evening, we can ask them to do that too. Uh, we've all got to step up our game and step back into the recruiting business. And uh, not that we've left the business, but start this machine turning again. Okay, man, we're at three o'clock now. So we're going to do a uh, closeout. Thank you, Kelly. That was a very good question. All right, I'm going to start on the, uh, with the C-Rock and we'll uh, go from there. C-Rock, any closing remarks? Uh, just uh, 18, thank you for, for all that you do out there each and every day. And, and like the CG said, hey, we've got to get after it. You know, we've got to, we got to start sprinting to the to the finish line uh, at the end of the FY. Sir, that's all I have. All oh, right. thank you, C Rock. DCG. Hey, sir, team. Uh, the next few months, as the CG just talked about, uh, will require everyone in this formation to rise up to the mission, and it's a big mission. Uh, what you do in June influences what we do in fourth quarter. Remember that our army is comprised of volunteers from across the country and the globe. And we need leaders totally engaged and you're all leaders and no one's more professional than the non-commissioned officers in this formation. And there's only one way to come into the army and that's through an army recruiter. And what you do today influences decisions and capabilities of our nation. So never forget what you do every day is important to the vital interests of our nation. Proud of you all. Thanks for what you do every single day. Put them in boots and winning matters. Thank you, DCG. Sergeant Major. Hey team, so I know you can't see this, but I have these two stickies on my um, on my uh, computer. Every day I look at them and it says, we can make our mission and it says ready to win, we're poised to win. So a high speed battalion command team out of first brigade, that is their motto for their, for their soldiers. And I know that everyone is poised to win. So we need everyone on deck, absolutely everyone on deck so we can make our mission. I know you can do it. I believe in you. We all believe in you. And you can absolutely do this. Back to you, sir. I may have seen that name. Was it Richmond Battalion? <laughs> I think it was. Hey, listen up, team. Here's the bottom line. I, I decided to give you a four-day weekend. Now, some of you, some folks were like, we've been teleworking for nine weeks, you know, four-day weekend. Well, guess what? I wanted to send a message to you. Um, that again, uh, you know, I wanted you to take some time this weekend, spend it with your family. I know you've probably been spending a lot of time with your family, but spend some time with your family. But here's what we also need. Come Tuesday, you need to come out of the block sprinting. You need to come out swinging. All right. Don't put your jammies on and let me read you a bedtime story. It's time to get after it. All right. I need every recruiter in United States Army's recruiting command pushing hard getting out there and prospecting, getting out there and conducting, getting out there and doing it, whether it's virtual for many, whether some might still be doing it in person, depending on the area, depending on the risk. We've got a mission. Our nation, our army has asked us to do this mission. It is vitally important. It's incredibly important and critical to national security. We cannot have that squad of nine go through that door with seven. And that's on us. We either make mission or we don't, and we are going to make mission. I'm at 22 months right now, and I am heads down working every day, listening to you. Listen to this command. Have you ever been in a command that tries to be as flat and, try to, and tries to give everything that you ask for? All right, and we are listening, and we are changing, and we are evolving, and we are a learning organization. And the only way you can go from good to great is see yourself every day. Look in the mirror and say, what can I do today for this organization? How can I give back? How can I solve problems? How can I move the ball forward? How can I be a positive influence and inspire people? Don't take from that tank. Fill that inspirational tank. Every day when you're out there, you go to another recruiter. What are you doing today for this command and for each other? That's the way you lead. We don't re lead with autocratic leadership, beating people up, technocratic, just it's about you know numbers and everything. That's not the case. 
at the end of the month, we got a number requirement, but we get to it through inspirational leadership. You inspire people by leading from the front, by doing what they're doing, by solving their problems, by caring, compassion, all right? And bring that energy every day. We don't have any rock kickers in this formation. We better not. We never not looking down going, oh, this will never work. I need positive, positive attitudes out there every day. All right, we're out there engaging the public and we're out there providing an opportunity for somebody to change their lives every day. All right, I am honored, honored to be in this formation and in this formation, not in front, in this formation with you every day. I leap out of bed and I'll tell you what, uh, we got a lot to do, but we're going to do it together. One team, one fight, one vision, and we're going to accomplish the mission. Now get out there, enjoy the weekend. And when you come back in on Tuesday, Put him in boots. Stay frosty. This is Defender 6 out.